Hello everybody, my name is Robert Dunt and I'm the founder of ArtTop10.com and I'm very pleased to be here today with one of the curators of the new Modigliani exhibition, uh, Emma Lewis. Hello Emma. <laughs> so, um, so Tom, tell me a little bit about this, from what I've seen it so far, stunning exhibition. What makes it like a standout show that it seems to be? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's um, the biggest, com uh, most comprehensive exhibition with you ever held in the United Kingdom. Wow. Um, it, we have assembled 100 works, um, including okay. 76 paintings, 76? 14 of which have never been shown in the UK no. before. No, it's, it, I mean, when you walk in, you can just see how many there are. It's absolutely stunning. Yeah. Um, this, well, we really have begun the exhibition um, in 1906 when we did the first arrives in Paris. Okay. And, um, and from there, you will see the development of his career until uh, 1920. Okay. When he died at age 35, exactly, man. He died young, and he obviously did a lot in that time. You can see it's a huge amount of painting, so he must have been exactly. quite prolific. He was incredibly prolific. Yes, that's the thing. He's um, he's a man whose whose biography has been um, kind of subject to the stuff of anecdote and myth and speculation. Yeah. But one thing for, for sure is that he, he was um, very very productive in his short life. Which is interesting. <laughs> and, and in that production, I think one of the things I was um, reading about on the way here, you're saying he's he's very experimental within his work. Would you be able to expand on that a little bit? Absolutely. I mean, Modigliani arrives in Paris, 21 years old, from a provincial town in Italy. Okay. I think we can all relate to the idea of a young person arriving in a major city and how much that changes you, how much you yeah, yeah. Uh, change by the people that you meet and the influences you're exposed to. Absolutely. So he um, happens to encounter Picasso. Okay. He's yeah. one of the first people he meets. But yeah. he also sees exhibitions of the early generation people like Cezanne and Toulouse and Trek. Okay. And all of these different influences start to play into his artwork. Okay. One thing that you see in the exhibition, for example, is sculpture. Yeah. Yeah. He's not so known as a sculptor, but actually he focuses he on sculpture. He really wants to be a sculptor. Well, really to be a sculptor. Yeah. He would introduce himself as a sculptor. Um, really? and, and he said, my, my real ambition is to work in stone. At one point. You will see how things like um, Egyptian and Cambodian artifacts, for example, uh, seeing those at museums and possibly um, on the cinema screen as well, yeah. started to play into uh, sculpture. Okay. So all, all of these different influences really play into as well. Oh, that's really interesting. So, so, so talking about that sort of experimental nature, what, what I always found fascinating when you need to really see the sense of his brushwork, the sense of his hand yeah. in the paintings. Yeah. And so much art today is say photography or installation work or um, even computer generated, which is all great and it has its place in the contemporary art world. But it's nice to see something where you feel so much of the art of yourself. Did that sense of his hand moving on a painting come across to you when you were curating it? Absolutely. I think I think a lot of of people I felt like I kind of knew Modigliani's work already. Yeah. Um, but actually what's so surprising as we were just talking about is the experimentation yeah. and you can really see the way that the brush strokes change. The experiments yeah. are very pointillist, very kind of okay. quite high energy um, works um, yeah, yeah. at one early point in his career. Yeah. Some of the works um, are much more worked into, some of the flat of this work behind the yeah. beautiful um, woman in a yellow dress, um, yeah. which is a lady named René Bordeaux. Okay. Um, you can really see how he's experimenting with quite expressive brush strokes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, maybe if you so, uh, okay, yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah, you've got the Matisse sort of, yeah, the, that sort of shape, that sort of... Yeah. And the coloration as well, yeah. so, um, so I think what you will really see is, is how he was experimenting with his technique as well. Okay, oh, that's really good. And I suppose part of that experimentation, especially with artists, can make them a bit more provocative, a bit more dangerous, because mm -hmm. I think there's a huge removal of like the new paintings he did mm -hmm. here, and I think at the time, his only solo show was sort of shut down by the police, it was all terribly controversial. I mean, do you think he still has that power to shock today? I don't know that he is, that he is so shocking, but certainly one thing that was very interesting for me is, is 100 years ago, um, his exhibition was uh, censored by yeah. the police commissioner <laughs> because he was offended by the sign of the of pubic hair, yeah, yeah, yeah. the canvases. And I don't think they necessarily are so shocking today, but the fact that this, that's still a talking point yeah. um, is, is, is something interesting, I think. It is interesting, isn't it? We are endlessly fascinated by artists causing problems. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we love them. Yeah, that's why we love them. Exactly. So actually, so actually that's one of the things, because obviously, I've, you know, for me, he's almost a bit like Jim Morrison from The Doors. He's like a sort of, he's like a rock star in the <laughs> art world. You know, he's mythical, he was a heavy drinker. Although, as we said, when he seemed to be painting, he seemed to do everything quite calmly. But, um, 
you know, and he died young. Did, did you get a sense of that mythical figure when you were putting the exhibition together? Did you sense you got a sense to know this man? Well, one of the, the, the fascinating things about working in the exhibition is all of the, the myth and the anecdote that surrounds me. Yeah. But what we work very hard to do is, is to strip that right back and we looked firstly at the artwork, that's where we began. Yeah. And then we also looked at accounts by his contemporaries, people that were closest to him. Okay. And, and it's their accounts um, that really are the voices that you hear in this exhibition. Okay. Um, for example, Beatrice Hastings, who was a um, very accomplished poet, editor, writer by the time we did young, met her and they okay. began their, their affair. Okay. She wrote a column um, from Paris, which um, was published in England. Yeah. And she talked about meeting the army and their relationship and what he was like. Yeah. So it's those kind of accounts which have been overlooked so. that we're looking at to find out who Woody the army really was. And would you say he was actually slightly different to that rock star image? I think it's more complex than that. Okay. I think it, it, it's very romantic yeah. to, 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 to paint the artist as this tragic thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And certainly it is tragic that he died, yeah. died so young. Um, but if you look at the artwork and you look and listen to and read the stories of, of those who knew him best, yeah. a much more complicated figure emerges. Well, I think it's absolutely fascinating. Well, I would urge everybody to come and see this and see the much more complicated figure <laughs> <laughs> themselves. Anyway, wonderful. Thanks very much for talking. Thanks very much. Okay. okay. Cheerio, guys. Bomb buckler.